On question number 15, we are given the equation of a circle in expanded form and asked to find the center and radius of this circle. So to do that, we'll complete the square for the x and y part separately. So x squared minus 12x will become x minus 6 whole thing squared minus 36. Then for the y terms, we would have uh, plus y minus 1 whole thing squared minus 1 and then add 33 is equal to 0. Right, so if we rearrange this, we are going to have x minus 6 whole thing squared plus y minus 1 whole thing squared. And if we add up these terms together, minus 36 minus 1 is minus 37. Plus 33 will give you minus 4 on this side. But what I'll do is just say that's equal to plus 4. So now we have the equation of the circle in a form where we can just read off the center of the circle. So the center of the circle will be given by these two numbers just with the opposite sign. So the center of the circle is going to be at 6 comma 1 and the radius is the square root of this number. Okay, so square root of 4. So this gives us a circle with a radius of 2 uh, centered at 6 comma 1. Now on part B of this question, we are given the equation of a line y equals x minus 3 uh, intersects the circle that we've just found the radius and center for. And we're told that it intersects the circle at two points. So the two points here where the line intersects the circle, we are told are the points P and Q. So let's just say these are the two points P and Q. And we are asked to find where they intersect. So if you're finding the intersection point between a line and a circle, we just need to take the equation of the line and substitute it into the equation of the circle. So we can either substitute into this one or into the rearranged form that we have here. Now, it won't really matter which one you substitute into, but I think it will be easier to substitute into this equation. Right? So what I'm going to do for the first bit is, so we have x minus six whole thing squared and then for the second part, instead of plus y minus 1, we're going to replace y by x minus 3. So you have x minus 3 minus 1 whole thing squared is equal to 4. Right? We can now simplify this bracket and then expand all the terms out. So I'll first write this as x minus 6 whole thing squared and then plus x minus 4 whole thing squared is equal to 4. If we then multiply the brackets out, we're going to have x squared minus 12x plus 36 from the first one, then plus x squared minus 8x plus 16, and then that's equal to 4. So we clearly have a quadratic. We'll move everything to one side and collect the terms together. So x squared plus x squared gives us 2x squared and then the minus 12x minus 8x gives us minus 20x and 36 plus 16 and then subtracting 4 from that will give us 48. Right, so at this point again you could just plug these numbers into the calculator to work out the coordinates or in this case we can actually divide this by 2. So let's say x squared minus 10x plus 24 is equal to 0. So if we solve this the two x values we'd get are either x is equal to 4 or x is equal to 6. So on this one you could factorize and show that working but when you have a quadratic you can just do that on your calculator. So we know what the x coordinates are but we then what we actually ask to find is the coordinates of the points p and q so we do need to find what the y coordinate is as well. Now to find the y coordinate is quite easy so just substitute x is equal to 4 into this thing here and then substitute x equals 6. So clearly substituting x equals 4 would give us 4 minus 3 so that makes y is equal to 1 and then substituting x equals 6, 6 minus 3 that gives us y is equal to 3. So the coordinates for point P and Q are going to be so let's say point P will be at 4 comma 1 and point Q at 6 comma 3. Then on part C of this question, we are told to show that the area of the minus segment is given by pi minus 2. Now, if you just have a quick look at part B again, it says that the line intersects the circle at two points, dividing the circle into two segments. So the segments of the circle 
are these parts here. So this bit here is called the minor segment. The segment on the other side, so all of this is what's called the major segment. So what we're asked to find here is the area of this shaded region. Before I draw the straight line and mark the segment, what we'll do is we'll try and mark these two coordinates kind of relatively correct. You know, it's not going to be an exact plot, but relative to the center, I want to mark these two points correctly. So we know the center is at 6, 1. We showed that on part A. Now point P has coordinates 4, 1. So 4, 1 should be directly to the left. So it should have the same Y coordinate as this point. So this point here is going to be point P, which is 4, 1. Now similarly, point Q is 6, 3. So that has the same X coordinate as the center. So that must be directly vertically above the center of the circle. So this is point Q and that has coordinates 6, 3. So the effect of this is, what this means is if I draw that line now, this bit here, this sector of the circle is exactly one quarter of the circle. And we are just trying to find what the area of this segment is equal to. So given that this is one quarter of the circle, this is a 90 degree angle here. So we just need to find the area of the sector and then subtract the area of the triangle. So we'll write this down here. So area of the sector. So let's say area of the sector of the circle. So that's just going to be equal to the area of the circle divided by four. Now we also showed on part A that the radius of the circle is equal to two. So this is just going to be equal to pi r squared divided by four which will just give us pi because two squared divided by four is one. Then we need to subtract the area of the triangle. So let's say area of the triangle. So given that this is a right angle triangle, we can just simply do uh, half base times height. So if I do half two times two, that's just going to give us two. So the area of the segment then is just the area of the sector is this one minus the area of the triangle. So that's just going to give us pi minus two. So area of segment is therefore equal to pi minus two as required here.